everyone, it's Cash here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you about remote events. This is going to be a series going from remote events to remote functions, and then we'll go to all detail about, you know, everything about them, and how to transfer data from the server to client, client to server, all that. Alright, so let's get started. Remote events, they're basically ways to transfer client data to the server, and it's also a way to prevent exploiting. So if you know what filtering enable is, this means that if you delete or change anything on the client, then it won't replicate to the server. It's actually vice versa where server replicates to client, client does not replicate to server. And um, basically this prevents exploiters from changing things on the client, like changing their money to like billions, and then on the server it actually shows it. No, if they change their money, it will stay the same. Okay. So, uh, remote events, let's go ahead and show you guys how to use them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is insert a local script into the workspace, a server script in the workspace, oops, there we go, and then also a remote event in the workspace. And obviously we're going to move all these, and I'm going to show you where you should move them. So usually local scripts will go in the starter player. Server scripts will usually go in the server script service. And these really depend on how important they are. So if it's really important, they go in local script. And usually you can put these interchangeable, but um, starter player scripts is where you'll keep everything that you don't need to do with characters or anything in the workspace. And even if that is true that you need to do it in the workspace, you can still put them here. Um, now, service scripts, we always put them in service script service, unless you're putting them in a... So, just a basic rundown. Service scripts, uh, they go in service script service if they're important, which it is. Start player scripts uh, is where the local scripts go. And remote events, they go in replicated storage. And I'm going to explain all these, so... Um, just to show you guys, like, why we do this... Remote events go in replicated storage because remote events, or my bad, remote events are needed by the client and the server. So we put them in replicated storage, and replicated storage uh, transfers from server to client. So whatever's in here, the client and server will see. And the server can see everything except for what's on only on the client. All right. Um, so now that we have this, we should name them. This will be called transfer since we're transferring data. This should be called server since it's in the server and only the server can see the script. And this will be called client because it's only on the client. And now let's uh, make these work. So we're going to do first of all transferring data from the client to the server. So let's create a variable and we'll set this variable to one. Okay. And then if we print this variable, it's going to come out as one, but we're not going to print it on the client. We're going to print it on the server, so let's transfer the data. So we're going to wait like, actually, let's just do it right as we spawn in. So game.replicated storage, which is the parent of this, dot transfer, which is the remote event. We're going to fire the server, and whenever you fire server, this server script, if you set it up right, it will see the signal and it'll see all the data that's in here. Now, whatever you put in here is what is in the remote event. Now, here's where it gets tricky. If you want to stop exploiters from changing this, then I'm going to show you how. So, if we just do variable, right, and now we go into the server script, we can do game.replicate storage dot transfer dot on server event connect function. So it reads the signal and now we press enter and create the function. And uh, now you might be wondering, well, how do we get the variables? This is actually really easy. First of all, you always have to put player or sender or just a first variable that marks the client. So I like to do player since it's the player. And now we need to do the variables that we put. So we'll do variable just because that's what we called it on the lo uh, local script. Now, here's what you should always avoid doing. 
never set important things to whatever the client sends you. So if it was like, say the client is trying to change your money, right? So this will be your money value. And we, you want to set it to one for some reason. And it says, it. so we'll, we could say player.money equals variable, right? The player could change that on the client. So if it was an exploiter, they could say, they could change this and set it to 99999, or they could just do game.replicate storage, transfer fire server, 99999, right? And we don't want that to happen. We don't, because that would be obvious uh, flaw in our code. What we do want to do, though, is set things that aren't important, like, you know, destroying things, like that, um, like, it's hard to explain, but we don't want bad things, so this would just be changing the player's nickname or something. So if we wanted to, like, if we wanted to load an animation or something, but this wouldn't be the animation, this would just be saying if you want to play the animation. So uh, some things that I've seen a lot of people do in their code, uh, especially, like, I remember seeing Alvin Blocks do it. He would play an animation by firing the server with the animation ID. And that's bad because if you do that, like say this was the animation ID, right? Exporters could change that and load a bad animation into the game or just a custom animation. Doesn't really matter what they do, we don't want it happening. So to avoid that, we can do, uh, we can have a server thing. So if we did local set variable equals one, right? And if the set, if the variable is not equal to set variable, so if it's not equal to one, then we could kick the player for exploiting. Now if we press play here, uh, if we did that and we press play, uh, the exploiter, like as you can see, this fires the server and we can't really see what happened. But if we were an exploiter and we put in our like little executor, we did transfer fire server and we did 99999. Let's say that would be the money, right? It would kick us for exploiting since we changed it. And since it's not one. Okay. Um, now, if you don't want this, you don't have to have it, but that's always good to have. Sometimes those checks you can't even put because it'd be kind of impossible to do. But there are some things that I can teach you like uh, let's say we want to get rid of part right and we'll do if variable equals to one right then or equals to set variable then we can do game dot workspace dot um, destroy me destroy and then we create a part in the workspace call this destroy me and then we press play. Now this would fire the server and it would destroy the part. So as you can see, there's literally no part in sight. But to show you guys that this actually works, we'll do wait five seconds and then we can press play. So let's do this. And actually, where is the part? Yeah, it's right here. Uh, it's waiting five seconds to destroy it. So let's try this out. We're in here, the part is right over there and it's gone perfect so now we know it works but that's not the only thing we can do of course we can transfer data to the server but we can also transfer data to the client now the way we do this is fire clients so instead of it having right here we will have um so let's say we want to send a variable over um now i'm going to teach you guys this in remote functions too so you can check what um like what type of uh, money or how much money you have on the server or something like that which wouldn't make sense but like it's hard to explain but only data you'd see on the server remote functions and stuff like that okay oh and they're also really useful if you want to uh send things back to guis so let's send data back to the client so we'll do local message equals hello and 
and the player would be a local player equals game dot players wait for child cash the king yt this is me my name on uh, roblox so we're just gonna do me for now but you would do something like you know like um well it's kind of hard to explain i don't really know what you would do but you could do game dot players dot added or something just a specific player you have to link it with a function to do it but uh, what we do is uh message or not message my bad game dot good storage dot transfer dot on client event or on um no, 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 okay, we're not picking up a signal, we're actually firing it back, so do fire client, and screw that, actually just get rid of the player, just do fire all clients, and if you want to fire one client, you would just do the player variable in here, but, and get rid of that, but, you know, we're doing fire all clients, so, we'll do the message now, and that's all we gotta do, now we go back here, game dot replicated storage, dot, and also this will be picking up the signal the same as it would on the server because you have to have a script picking it up you can't just fire the client and it magically does something so the transfer dot on client event connect function and then instead of having the player variable right here we would just have like variable right or message and then we do print message so now if we press play we will see here it should fire after a little bit, I think. Did we put the weight? Uh, let's see. No, we did not actually. So, it's firing every client. And when we pick it up, we should be printing it. But it seems like there's an error. So, it's the same exact remote event. Maybe we should just add a weight, like five seconds, or wait. We'll do wait one. Let's try it now. And as you can see, we found it. Hello. And it does work. So that's how you fire data to the clients. And you could even do fire client and then they destroy the part on the client. So that would help if you're doing like a simulator game and they do own the thing, but you only want that player to get rid of the thing. So if you're doing like a simulator game, you know, and uh, you only want one player to have that door removed that has the right requirements or something then they have the right requirements and it deletes the wall for them and then you can also do checks on like uh, anti-hack or something but we won't do that um, because that's not that's only for like a big game that you actually are making and you guys could easily implement that with if statements and stuff like that but let's uh, make one last thing so what we're going to do here is make it so whenever we fire the client, the server fires something back. Now, this is way easier with remote functions, which are basically calling the server, and then the server fires it back right away. But we're just going to do it with remote events just to show you guys what you can do. So what we're going to do here is you transfer fire server. Hello. And we can get rid of the function thing down here. And then we go to the server. Game dot storage.transfer dot on server event connect function. And then we do player and then the message. And then we do um fire client back so we do uh, game dot storage dot transfer fire client player and then we go back here and then we do game dot storage dot transfer dot on client event connect function player and then we'd actually just do the message here right here and then we would have print message and actually get rid of the player my bad print message or server print server said dot dot to concatenate the string 
and now we should now it should work so it says server said hello right away and the way it does that is this fires it this goes back and it says the exact same thing so that would be sending things back you know but you can just use that with remote functions and do the same thing with the remote events but faster and more simple and it's more convenient but yeah that's all for today guys um, if you want to see remote functions leave a like on this video I'm gonna be posting it tomorrow and I'll see you guys in the next one see ya